On the 28th of October 2019, after years of development, storyboarding, and animating, Vivzi Pop and her team released the pilot for Hasbun Hotel, a series about the princess of an urbanized depiction of hell who starts a hotel that aims to rehabilitate sinners in order for them to get to heaven. And it blew up. Fan art, fan fiction, memes, oh, those awful hurt. music parodies, everyone was talking about Hasbun Hotel, and for good reason too. The animation was incredibly impressive for YouTube standards, the voice acting was great, the characters were funny, and there was just so much interesting stuff going on in the pilot. Hasbun Hotel was a series that was basically designed to become what I like to call fandom fodder. Like from the very beginning, you just knew this thing was going to have one of the worst fandoms you've ever seen. This is the most obnoxious thing I've ever experienced in my life. Shortly after the release of Hasbun Hotel, Vivzi Pop and Spindle Horse Tunes would upload the first episode of Hell of a Boss, a series that takes place in the same fictional universe as Hasbun, and it too would become incredibly popular. Hasbun would be picked up by A24 Studios and be released on Amazon Prime in 2024, while from 2020 to 2024, Hell of a Boss would continue to release its episodes on YouTube. This was honestly really smart, satiating fans with supplementary material until the main series was finished. Regardless of what you may think about Vivzi Pop or her writing or Hasbun Hotel as a show itself, you cannot deny that it is absolutely incredible that a pilot that aired on YouTube was able to garner so much attention that it got picked up by a pretty big streaming service. I think it's great to see indie creators being able to break into the industry with unique and unorthodox ideas, and Hasbun Hotel is one of the biggest examples of that happening. The success of Hasbun Hotel also kickstarted one of my favorite and least favorite trends in YouTube animation, just releasing full pilot episodes on YouTube. Now, don't get me wrong, Hasbun did not invent this idea, but it certainly made it a lot more feasible for animation studios to try and take risks like this. Just recently, a pilot called Ramshackle by ZDZ, 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 was released on YouTube, and in less than a week, it has over 2 million views. Just last year, Lackadaisy's pilot was also released on YouTube, and as of recording, it has over 13 million views. But both of these animated pilots absolutely pale in comparison to the view count of the amazing Digital Circus. As of recording, the Amazing Digital Circus pilot sits at not 100, not 200, but 300 million views on YouTube. Now, there's probably a lot of factors outside of just the pilot itself contributing to the amount of views, like the fact that the YouTube algorithm probably thinks this is suitable for children and keeps recommending it to children. Digital Circus content farm stuff is all over you. My name is Promni and I can't escape the Digital Circus. My name is Promni and I can't escape the Digital Circus. First of all, the switch from YouTube to Amazon Prime for Hasbun Hotel has had quite the impact on the quality of the show itself. The actual series is much better animated, more consistent with line work, shading, and backgrounds. Another huge change came in the form of the voice cast. All the voice actors from the pilot were replaced, and this was kind of a big deal at first. The internet had spent over four years falling in love, and the Hasbun Hotel fandom had grown so attached to these voice actors. Apparently, they were replaced because the Amazon series needed union voice actors. I did like the original cast, but I don't really mind the change because the new cast is almost virtually identical in terms of voice direction. Like, apart from Angel Dust and Alistair, it's not really that obvious. Digital Circus only has the one pilot episode out, so trying to compare where it's heading compared with Hasbun Hotel is pretty much impossible, but we can speculate. The first episode has 300 million views in just 5 months, and this isn't just a one-time anomaly either. The announcement video for more episodes being released has managed to hit 45 million views in just 2 months. It's clear that Digital Circus is going to be huge and part of that is likely due to YouTube just having a larger audience than Amazon would. I also believe that Hasbun Hotel being a lot more edgy isn't helping. Like, sure, it's the type of show that's definitely going to have its fans, and those fans will be 14-year-olds who obsess over Tumblr Sexy Man of a Week while being too young to even know what a Tumblr Sexy Man is. But Digital Circus just has a much wider appeal. If someone caught me watching Digital Circus, they'd question me, and I'd lie by saying it's a childhood cartoon. If someone caught me watching Hasbun Hotel, I'd have to kill them. Hasbun Hotel is fine, I guess. 
It's a show that pretty much suffers from being a bit too ambitious with some of its ideas and themes, things that are far more forgivable in a YouTube series than an actual show on a streaming service that you're expected to pay money for, but most of my criticisms of has been disappear when they start singing because, oh my goodness, the songs in this show are actually really good, uh, for the most part. Yeah, some of the lyrics are annoying and cheesy, but overall, pretty solid musical. The Amazing Digital Circus also has some good music, although it's not a musical. Gooseworks did a lot of music stuff before Digital Circus, so it's no surprise that the music in the pilot is also pretty good. Honestly, I don't have much to say about Digital Circus. There were some funny jokes here and there, but ultimately, I actually found it quite boring. It's a pilot, so it's bound to not be the most engaging thing in the world, as it's just introducing the characters and the basic premise. I mean, it's nothing anyone who hasn't been on the internet in the last 10 years hasn't seen before. Like, oh, this super colorful, playful thing is actually super dark and twisted. This has gotten old. I think Hasbin's pilot easily clears Digital Circus in terms of quality, just personally. Hasbin's pilot characters were far more interesting to watch on the screen. That being said, I feel like Digital Circus may have more potential in the future than has been. Keep in mind that now Hasbin has been acquired by a large streaming service, there's bound to be a lot less freedom when it comes to how certain ideas are allowed to be expressed and handled. Although, to be fair, in between The Boys and Invincible, it seems that if you want to have a dark, violent, shockfest TV series, Amazon Prime is the place to go. Actually, now that I think about it, Hasbin might have more creative freedom by being on a streaming service than on YouTube, considering just how censored YouTube content has to be these days in order to not get demonetized. But at the end of the day, even if Hasbin is given all the creative freedom it needs, it's still not going to stop the fact that the show feels like it was written by a kid who just discovered how to swear. In fact, despite having more adult themes like abuse, violence, and addiction, Hasbin feels juvenile because its absurdity and more real moments clash. A lot. And that isn't to say that absurdist art can't also be mature and realistic, look at something like Bojack Horseman, but the way Hasbin does it just feels like the worst type of tonal whiplash. And I dislike this so much because Hasbin comes so close so many times to almost being great, but it always just falls a little bit short. And that's why I'm glad the show is getting a season 2. I also think Digital Circus can probably win me over as more episodes get released, so I'm really excited to see where they go with it. Amazing Digital Circus and Hasbin Hotel represent two different paths for indie animation. One where the art is kept independent and possibly more free and expressive, and one where the creators have to answer to network executives and studio heads. But the strange thing is, these two paths can be a lot more similar than you think. At the end of the day, Glitch Studios is still a studio with employees they have to pay and quotas they have to meet. They don't have absolute freedom because they're on a third-party platform like YouTube. The only way for us to find out the fate of indie animation is to sit back, relax, and wait. My name is Kane. I am your...